Hi hey math class, I hope you're all doing well. Welcome back to another lesson. In today's class, we're going to be looking at lesson 74, parts one through five. So let's get started. So in part A, we have the mixed number two plus eight over 10, right? So we have a whole number and we're trying to add it to a fraction. We have to remember that we cannot add a whole number with a fraction. In order to add, we need to have two fractions. So our first step will be to change this two into a fraction. So remember, each whole number is over the number one. So that will be our first step. We're going to put the two over one. But now in order to add the two fractions, they both have to have the same bottom number, right? This one's over one, this one's over 10. So I'm going to change this one and multiply it by 10. My next step will be to whatever I do to my bottom number, I have to do to my top number, right? So if I multiply my bottom number by 10, I'll multiply my top number by 10. So now what I'm going to do is just rewrite this as a new fraction. So two times 10 will give me 20. One times 10 will give me 10. And then I can add the other fraction that I had, eight over 10. Now, both of my fractions have the same bottom number, which means I can add them. So my answer will be, and I'll use a different color. Remember, only my top number will change. My bottom number will stay the same, right? So the 10 will stay the same from my bottom number. And then our top number, we're just going to add 20 and eight, which gives us 28. So our final answer is going to be 28 over 10. So let's look at one more example. Let's look at part B. So I'm going to rewrite that as well. So in part B, we have the mixed number seven plus two over nine. Right, so once again, we have a whole number and a fraction. I can't add them the way they're written, so I have to change this seven into a fraction. So what I'm going to do is remember that each whole number is over the number one. Now we need to make sure that both of our fractions have the same bottom number, right? I'm gonna multiply this bottom number by nine, but I have to remember that whatever I did to my bottom number, I have to do to my top number. So I'm going to multiply my top number by nine as well. So now, all I'm going to do is rewrite this as a fraction. So seven times nine, you can skip count by sevens nine times. You can use your multiplication table to help you. It'll give us 63 over nine plus our original fraction that we were adding it to, which is two over nine. So now I'm going to use a different color for our final answer. Once again, we have to remember that our bottom number will not change. So our bottom number will stay the same. So our bottom number in our fraction will be nine. And then the only thing that will change is our top number. So we're going to add 62 plus, uh, sorry, 63 plus two, which gives us 65. So our answer will be 65 over nine. So what I want you guys to do now for parts C and D is to follow the same steps we did. You're going to have to change the whole number into a fraction, then multiply the bottom number so that both of the bottom numbers are the same. Remember that what you do to your bottom number, you do to your top number, and then try to find your answer. So you can pause the video now, and then now we'll look at part two, which will be ratio word problems. So welcome back to part two. So like I mentioned before, we're going to be looking at ratio word problems. So I'll read what it says in our book. So you're going to write the ratio problems and the answers. Remember all the signs that go into the problem. You'll write three fractions. You need a times sign or a multiplication sign after the first fraction. Then you need an equal sign before the last fraction. The story problem gives you information about the names. The problem tells about the first fraction and the fraction that comes after the equal sign. So we've done, if you look on your sheet, we have the first one done 
for you as an example, so I thought we would go over it. The problem tells us that there are seven balls for every 10 children. If there are 50 children, how many balls are there? So if you look on your sheet for your other problems, we have this, right? So in our first blank, we're going to write our word, the two things that we're comparing. And then we're going to write our three fractions. So let's get started. Once again, let's read what it says. There are seven balls for every 10 children. So we're comparing how many balls there are per children. So we're going to write balls and children. Right? There are seven balls for every 10 children. So that will be our fraction for the first blank. Seven balls per 10 children. And then it tells us if there are 50 children, how many balls are there? Right, so all we know is that there are 50 children. So we have to figure out what we're multiplying by and our missing top number in our uh, last fraction. Right, so what we have to first figure out is 10 multiplied by what number will give us 50, right? 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. So it's going to be five. Since these are equivalent fractions, that means I multiply my bottom number and my top number by the same number. So that means my top number will also be 5. So now what I have to do is just multiply 7 by 5, which will give us 35. So we're going to follow the same steps that we did with this problem for parts B and C. In your first blank or the longer blank, you're going to write the names of the two things that you're comparing. Then you'll write the fraction. You'll have to write three fractions. So the first fraction will be given to you in the problem. This is what you're multiplying by. Both your top and bottom number should be the same number. And then you'll be given one of these numbers. And you'll use that to help you figure out the rest of the missing numbers. So you can pause the video now. And then we'll just look at part three. So welcome back to part three. For part three, we're going to be looking at number families, but we're going to be doing something a little bit different. So I've attached a picture from our textbook that goes over some examples of what we're going to be doing. So let's follow along if you can, and I'll read what it says in our textbook. Some number family problems tell about getting more and then getting less. Here's the number family you'll make for those. And then it shows you what it will look like. It has what you end up with, how much went out, and how much went in. So this will be important because this is the format we'll use for the next number families we'll be making in part three. Right, how much, end, how much we end up with, how much went out, and how much went in, right? So if we continue to read what it says in our textbook, it tells us that the first thing that happens is shown by the big number. That's the number that goes in. The next thing that happens is shown by the number for out. After that number goes out, there's still some left. That's the number you end up with. It's the difference between the number in and the number out. So they give us a sample problem. So I'll read the problem, we'll work through that sample problem, and then I want you guys to try to do parts A, B, and C on your own. So the sample problem they give us in our textbook is, a tank is empty. Then 178 gallons flow into the tank. 123 gallons flow out of the tank. How many gallons are still in the tank? Right, so we're going to use the same format we looked at. So we have end up will be our small number, out will be our small number, and in will be our big number. Right, so once again in the problem, it tells us 
that a tank is empty, a hundred, then 178 gallons flow into the tank. Right, so in came 178 gallons. Then it tells us 123 gallons flow out of the tank. So out will be 123. How many gallons are still in the tank? So how many did we end up with? So this is the number we're going to be trying to find in our example, right? So in order to find this little number, we have to subtract these numbers. So 178 minus 123, right? Eight minus three is five. Seven minus two is five. So we have 55 gallons. So we ended up with 55 gallons. So we're going to use the same format of end up, out, and in for the next three number families that we have to make. So you can pause the video now, try working on those number families, and then I'll see you in part four. So welcome back to part four. So in part four, we're going to be looking at our coordinate system. So you're going to have to find points on the coordinate grid. Each item tells you what X equals and what Y equals. So remember, let me draw it here. The bottom axis or the bottom arrow is going to be your X. And then the arrow that goes up will be your Y. So when you're given a coordinate, First, you're going to look at your X, and then you'll look at your Y. So in part A, we have the coordinate X equals 5, and Y equals 6. So in order to find what a letter is for this coordinate, we first start with our X axis, which is along the bottom. So you're going to count five, the five numbers, right? So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, right? And then the Y tells me that I'm going to count up six spaces. So I'm here at my X, which was 5, and then I'll count up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And then if you look on your uh, coordinate system there, there's a letter there. So you should get the letter V. So for part B and C, I want you to follow the same steps. First, you're going to look at your X, X, or X arrow, which is along the bottom, and then you'll count up with your Y arrow and find the other two missing letters. If you have any questions, please let me know. And then we'll look at part five, which will be our last part for today. So in part five, sorry, let me just erase this. You have to complete the equation to show the fraction of 1 and the equivalent fraction. I know that might sound complicated, so don't worry. I'll explain what we have to do. So we'll go through the first example together. We have the fraction 1 third times blank equals, and then we're giving one of the numbers. So this is very similar to what we did in part two with our ratios, right? So once again, we're looking at part five, number or letter A, right? So we have the fraction one third multiplied by, this will be our uh, equivalent fraction. So our bottom and top number in this fraction should be the same number, equals blank over 12. So in order to find our missing numbers, our first step will be to look at our bottom numbers, right? We have to figure out three multiplied by what number will give us 12, right? So if we skip count by threes, three, six, nine, 12, we know that three multiplied by four will give me 12. Now for the top number, I only have one number, but that's okay, we can solve. Why? because we know that this is an equivalent fraction. So we know that our bottom number will be the same number as my top number, right? So if our bottom number was four, 
that means our top number will also be 4. So now all we have to do to find our missing number is multiply the 1 and the 4. 1 multiplied by 4 gives us 4. So our missing number, or our final fraction should be 4 over 12. So we're going to follow the exact same format for all the other problems. So remember, the middle fraction, both your top and bottom number should be the same number. So we're going to use that to help us find all the other missing numbers. So you can pause the video now, solve it, and if you have any questions, please let me know. Amazing job, guys, and I'll see you in our next lesson. Bye.